This is a work of fiction. Written, narrated, and produced by me, Dennis Macareg. Please subscribe to my podcast and share it with friends. With several hours before the wedding begins, we decide to look for a place to rent our costumes. Not knowing where to begin our quest, we enter a narrow alley with boutiques and apparel stores on both sides. Strange, but I've never been in a place where there are so many souvenirs for sale. Olivia looks through the window of a store that sells all kinds of items, pens, t-shirts, watches, chess sets, different bronze statues, almost everything imaginable. She goes inside and I follow her. Maybe she knows where we can get a costume, I suggest pointing to a salesperson. Olivia approaches her. They exchange polite greetings in Italian. Not paying attention, a calligraphy feather in a glass case fascinates me. Then she leans to me. We need to go to the Rialto Bridge area. We are crossing a footbridge when Olivia stops in the middle. Hey, let's take some pictures. Okay. We lean on the iron railing, taking turns and making funny faces. Then we hear a commotion. The pedestrians along the canal walkway are clapping and cheering. A gondola with a man on his knees is proposing to his girlfriend and a photographer in a motorboat is capturing the event. The scene playing in front of us couldn't be more romantic. Another one, quick, before they disappear. A light scent of her perfume drifts into my nose. Her spontaneousness makes my heart somersault. She presses her cheek against mine, sending a wave of tenderness between us. Raising the phone above us, just as the gondola is passing below, she snaps her photo. Venice is truly a lover's paradise. We continue to walk and come across another church. Curious why a line of people is waiting outside, I ask the lady at the door, what's going on? She tells us it's a concert. It's quarter full inside, so we are able to find an empty pew. The string orchestra plays some classic or Baroque music. The acoustics inside are so good, their sound is amplified by the stone structure. Midway through the program, a woman in a formal red gown walks onto the stage and sings several areas. Olivia whispers in my ear, My first live opera in Italy. Only 10 euros for us both, I say winking. Reaching for her hand, she interlaces her fingers in mine. As the angelic voice fills the dome, there is a sudden lightness taking over my body. The pathways along the canals twist and turn like a labyrinth in no particular order. Different nooks and a series of small passages lead us to a new spot. I imagine the locals in the past walking the same streets and living in the same residence where we are. Venice is unlike any city I've ever been to. It's just plain unreal. They say it's the Aqua Alta. The combination of the wind, moon, and the tide that floods the entire city. How do pedestrians survive such disruption? Arriving in a square, we find people filling their water bottles from a water fountain. Travelers from all over the world are speaking several languages. The words are not understood, but it feels good 
knowing we are all going through the same type of metamorphosis by being here. Collectively, we are all citizens of the world experiencing the same thing in awe of this magnificent city. We stumble upon a bookstore. Because both of us are book lovers, we go inside to check it out. While walking through the aisles, looking for a fun read in English, Olivia notices a small racks of postcards. Let's mail one to each other so we have something to remember when we're back home. Though her suggestion is lighthearted, reality stabs me in the heart. About 24 hours from now, my plane will be taking off from the Marco Polo Airport. Borrowing a pen from the cashier, I begin writing what was on my mind earlier. Olivia, by the time you are reading this, you're already back in Seattle and I'm back in San Diego. We had so much fun time here in Venice. Who would have thought we'd meet? Let's not waste what we've already started and continue on. You know where to find me. Rialto Bridge is grand, just as so many bridges are grand in Venice. The gigantic bridge is constructed of marble arches across the Grand Canal. It is the most photographed bridge in the city. Shops are built along the bridge. The visitors are in a frenzy to buy anything in sight to take back to their home. Stores selling anything and everything from hand-blown glass arts, intricately made bowls, and a vase that looks as if Michelangelo made it himself are on display. Again, we ask around where we can find the type of costumes we're looking for, but are eventually disappointed. Wanting to take a break before we resume our search, we stop by Rialto Market. Visitors are meandering aimlessly while locals have hurried looks on their faces. Musicians are playing and the vendors are handing out tasty samples. While passing through the fruit and vegetable stands, there are oranges, green apples, nuts wrapped in clear plastic bags, strawberries, bananas, flowers, basket of cherries, dried fruits, tomatoes, eggplants, red bell peppers, and mushrooms. We purchase a basket of cherries and look for a place to eat them away from the pedestrians. We find a dock and sit down. Boats carrying cargoes of wine and restaurant supplies pass by. While we pop cherries in our mouths, we catch up on our emails and reply to texts from our friends. Please check out my latest novel, A Whisper to the Moon, at online retailers and at bookstores where it's available. Thank you for listening to episode 13 of my podcast. On this particular scene, they walk in a store. In my own experience, we've been several places looking for things. There are expensive stuff, cheap stuff, you name it. Some of them are unbelievably expensive, 200 euros for a chess set or something like that. I noticed a quill in a glass case and I bought one actually. I, I've always been impressed by the 16th century writers with the feathers being dipped in an inkwell as they write the long poetry or letters to their loved ones. As a writer, I bought one of them, but haven't uh, had a chance to use it. I think it's going to be really messy. There's a scene where they walk inside a church and a concert is going on. 
We actually passed by churches advertising four to five piece orchestra music. And I believe it's not that expensive and you just uh, kind of like uh, walk in and enjoy it. Though I didn't get to experience it. Um, we did go to a church when we were in Florence. When we walked in, there was a choir singing and a soloist. Uh, the, the, the sound was just amazing inside the way she was uh, singing and the accompaniment. And of course, the choral music is just amazing inside a church because of the way the acoustic is. We listened for about 15 minutes or so, and when the performance was uh, over, donated a few uh, euros uh, in the donation box. One thing you always think when you are in Venice is the Aqua Alta. This is the phenomenon where the water rises and the entire city is flooded. Because it can happen anytime, everyone is always uh, vigilant on the tides. Luckily, nothing like that happened when we were over there. I believe high tides mostly happen during the fall season because of the uh, rotation of the moon, of course. I'm not a scientist, but uh, I think that's what it is. We also saw a lot of a uh, water fountain when we were walking around. People are just uh, refilling their water bottle. Yeah, I believe it comes directly from the mainland and from the mountains. Uh, through the big, uh, there, there's a causeway that connects the Venice from the mainland. I think it's called the, the land bridge over the lagoon. And I think the pipe is over there. I might be wrong. And, but you know, they're really fresh. I didn't get to drink the water in Venice, but I drank a lot from the fountains when we were in Rome. Cool water on a uh, 85 degree heat. And of course, the Rialto Bridge arcing over the Grand Canal. This is a huge structure. It's imposing. It's just amazing. There are stores built along the side of the bridge where you can buy all kinds of uh, souvenir before heading back home. 